Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Wow. wow. My wife and I are so blessed to be here around through this beautiful church. We're so amazed. Thank you for having us here today. My name is Rasta. I this is my legal name. Rasta is part of my family name and has nothing to do with Rasta Firmia. I don't know if you heard about that. Ra uh, Rasta in Persian means uh, truth or path. So that's where I get Rasta from. Um, I came, we, I moved here in 2012 for my undergraduate. I studied at, uh, I studied at the University of Central Oklahoma. Um, <clears throat> I studied political science as major, and my minors were international relations, business administration, and marketing. I, as soon as I arrived here in the United States, I realized that I cannot live without my family. So I decided to graduate as soon as possible. I graduated less than a pro less than three three years. Uh, I used to take like 24 credit hours per semester just to go back home as soon as possible. Uh, I graduated in. Late 2014, uh, moved back home. Um, in 2016, I realized I cannot live without my best friend, so I proposed to her and I got married. Uh, she's sitting over there, the beautiful lady over there. <laughs> my, back, my religious background, I was a non believer because of uh, problems and issues in the Middle East that is happening of religion. And, I don't want to go into details of it, so I completely gave up on religion and God and everything. Um, even though I was uh, approached by a couple of my good professors and friends here in the United States about Jesus, and they gave me a couple of Bibles which I never read, and uh, um, I didn't bother to listen to them, unfortunately. Um, when I got married to Roya, um, she had a similar background like mine, but she never gave up on, on God. She was tired of religion, the things happening in the Middle East. Uh, she was living in Iran, and she was like searching for the true path to God, the true religion. On the other hand, I was totally dead from that side. I had no beliefs. Um, whenever she tried to talk to me about God, and this, the, that there, there is a true God, I have always ignored that conversation, I have always uh, tried not to listen to her. But she never gave up. Um, one day she came across a couple of uh, Christian Iranian friends in Iran. Uh, she started talking to them, asking a couple of questions, day by day more questions. Soon they realized that she's very interested in Christianity and she's asking a lot of questions. So they told her to stop asking questions because uh, you never know, she might lose her life for, for this if the government officials will come to know. And it's going to be a big problem for them too. Uh, because promoting religion, other than Islam and Iran, it's like prohibited. And uh, it's uh, treated by um, execution, basically. So, uh, but she kind of publicly stopped searching for, uh, searching about Christianity. But she started reading from here and there, whatever she can get her hand, whatever she can get her hands on. She started reading about it, about Christianity, and uh, uh, until we came, we moved here in 2016 for my master's, December 2016 for my master's. And um, I was invited to one of my friends' house and uh, just to get together to see my old friends. Uh, all of a sudden, in that gathering, I saw Roya talking to a couple in the corner, and she was like very excited and happy. I could feel the energy from her, and I could know that there's a problem coming. There's a trouble coming from that side of the room. So, uh, I, a couple of minutes later, she came to me, and uh, she said, hey, guess what? I was like, oh, here we go again. There's something I should know about. Then she said, uh, these couple, they invited us to, to church, uh, Oklahoma City Life Church, and this is the address, and we live in Lynn. I looked at the address, I said, oh my God, this is five hours drive, no, we're not gonna go there. And she was like, 
She didn't believe me. She Googled it up and it was like 15 minutes draft. I tried. <laughs> I tried my best to avoid going to church, but uh, I, I believe it was the second Sunday of January. Um, it was about 8.30ish in the morning. I saw something, jumped from the bed, tried to wake me up, wake up, wake up, we are, gonna, you know, we're, we are going to go to this church. And I was like, ah, let me sleep, please, you know. It's Sunday and it's my day off. I hate waking up in the mornings, but she didn't give up. We argued a little bit and uh, I woke up, I came out of the bed and she went to get prepared. As soon as she left the room, I turned back, there was this much space in the blanket and the bed. I just dived back into the bed and I was like, okay, I'm going to get some sleep until she's back. And 10 seconds later, I felt a giant odd hand grabbing my leg, pulling me out of the bed, <laughs> saying, you are going to church. And I was like, leave me alone. She didn't stop. It was that, I was that mad that I, I did not speak a word with her while driving, driving to the Oklahoma City Church, uh, Black Church. And uh, she was like very enthusiastic, and very energetic, uh, a lot of positive energy, and I was like... <laughs> and um, once we arrived to the parking lot, I uh, tried to walk her out of this, they didn't agree to listen to me, pulled me out of the car, going step by step to the, the doors of the church. Um, I was resisting. There was, there was a conflict going in me. I, was, was, I didn't want to go. But step by step, getting closer to the church, I felt some energy waving to, through my body. And I cannot describe it. It's very hard to describe. Um, it was a battle in me. No and yes, kind of. Um, as soon as we, we got to the gates or the doors of the church, we were welcomed and we passed the gates. Um, I felt an energy, something bigger than me, something bigger than all of us, uh, grab my hand and walk me gently into the church. It was, um, at that moment, it was a very weird feeling for me. I couldn't understand it. I resisted, but you know, sometimes when you, you cannot resist anymore, you lose your energy. I lost my energy over there. I was, I felt that gently I was like directed, uh, directed to the church. As soon as I sat there and uh, our pastor talked about Jesus and how Jesus gave his life for us, for our sins, um, I, I gave up. I totally gave up. I couldn't resist anymore. but. Like, when we went back home, I still had that battle with me, you know, this was just a feeling, I'm not going to believe it. The next week, and next week, week by week, every week we used to go to church, and I kind of felt that moment that I am counting the days for Sunday to come, to go to church, and uh, whenever I'm waking up in the mornings, I'm not setting an alarm. In the morning, I wake up automatically. Usually, I put five, six alarms. I, I wake up Roy, I wake up our neighbors, I wake up everybody before I wake up. So, uh, I hate waking up in the mornings. But on Sundays, it's something different. And um, luckily, in, uh, in, in February, it's the second week of February, they have a baptism uh, week. So, Roy and I sat and talked about it, and I, I told Roy, I think there is something changing me. There's something happening to me. Like, I cannot describe it. But I think we should go for this baptism, uh, to get baptized. And uh, uh, not, not yet. <laughs> so uh, Roya was all for it, of course. She was like, Let, let's do it. And I was like, OK. Yeah, maybe we should do it. And we got baptized uh, on the second week of February. It was an amazing experience, a day that we will never, ever, ever forget. Uh, it was all new for us. And they took my picture and uh, put it on social media. 
um, as per our church, that impacts th tens of thousands of people over uh, social media. I don't know if the picture is ready, I just want to show it to you. Yeah. This was the picture. <laughs> this is <laughs> This is me trying to resist and now how to see how, how happy I look at this picture. So, um, after we got baptized, um, um, things started to change in our lives. Um, I started to feel a, a purpose in my life. Uh, it's a different journey of this life. And, um, after we, that, what, what our church told us that impacted tens of thousands of people, um, we decided to do more. We started serving in our church, we started going and talking to people, we started to, to do any impact in any way in people's life. Um, the point that I want to send across is um, in so many different countries, if you convert to Christianity or you meet Jesus, you might be executed for it. Um, you might lose your life, you might lose your closest family members, your mother, your dad, they might abandon you, your closest friends, in so many other countries, not even on um, But in this country, you can be Christian or convert to Christianity without losing a friend, without losing a family member or anyone. It's a great, great, great blessing here. Uh, please uh, appreciate the gift of, of being Christian in this country. Um, I'm saying this because I see so, so many people, it's very normal for them to be Christian. It's so quiet. But where I come from, I see people die for their faith. I see uh, people convert to Christianity and, and in their homes and nobody knows about it their husbands, their wives, or brother, mother, father, nobody really knows about, about their faith. So I just ask you to think about this and really appreciate this, this gift that God has given us. Thank you very much. Amen.